This is you stand there, and I'm going to talk today about attacking white scope targets in Black Bounty. So, um, who am I? I'm you stand there, known as you stand 980. I'm in Black Bounty since 2014, approximately. I'm also the CEO of Mobi Minify, which provides pan testing services to companies. So the subject of today is really interesting because every time you might um, get some wide scope targets in Black Bounty and you're not sure where to start and how to how to approach a target and start um, hunting for bugs on it. So what are wide scope targets? Wide scope targets refer to a system or network that is being tested for vulnerabilities over a large area of range or components. So some examples of wide scope targets in Black Bounty are obviously Yahoo, Apple, FIS, Atlassian, and you have other couple of um, really interesting targets and uh, really interesting Black Bounty plot, uh, plot, uh, programs that have wide, wide scope targets. So what's um, interesting in choosing wide scope targets when doing Black Bounty? So because of the size of the of the scope, um, there is like a bigger chance for you to find vulnerabilities because the scope is really um, large. And so you might find some assets that other hackers haven't hacked on yet and that um, you might be lucky finding those, um, um, those vulnerabilities other people haven't found yet. So the main interesting part in this, um, in this, in this, um, whole thing is finding the targets that others haven't hacked on. So this increases your chance to find vulnerabilities as you have a bigger surface to explore. What are the challenges that come into place when hacking on this kind of targets? So the scope is too large and you don't know where to start. It's easy to miss vulnerabilities without using a systematic approach because you're just like random opening this link, closing this link, and then you, you, you get lost, you don't know where to st where you have um, uh, stopped your last um, hiking session. And as it's a wide scope target, it means also that other hackers might be hacking on it because they are also um, looking for the low hanging fruits. So the strategy is, is start by doing your casual subdomain enumeration and then use a lot of, of per permutation based on the words found on the target. So that means that, for example, if I find um, a subdomain list for this target.com that I'm hacking on, I'm going to try to grab as much words as possible from this list that I had and then try to do some permutation based on these words. So for example, here, um, when we use Goal GNS by Shubs, then um, you might find, for example, for, uh, firstly, you might have 125 subdomains. After uh, using Goal GNS and doing some permutations and uh, resolving again, now you have way more subdomains. You have 172 subdomains. But that's just like um, a really small amount of subdomains you can find because by doing more, more and more permutation, you're likely to, to be going to find many interesting, um, many interesting subdomains that other people have, haven't um, seen yet. So we need more subdomains, what do we do? There is this new tool called Regulator that's really good by um, Crumpet that I have seen recently. And so basically what it does is that it does like some intelligent permutation on the list that you have. And so by using these tools after a dual genus, you might um, really get way more subdomains that you had because it's going to, to make a better um, permutation list. And once you resolve that, I bet that you are going to find way more subdomains um, to hack on. What I usually liked, love doing is that after doing these both steps, I'm going again to repeat the same process two or three times to make sure that I get way more subdomain that I had in the first place. So keep going deeper and um, don't hesitate to do full power scanning on the subdomains found, JU, Wayback Machine, Archive.org, 
just grab all the, the the links that you can because everything is going to be really um, useful for the next steps. You can also use Katana Go Spider Hackcrawler to to crawl the subdomains and save all the output in one file, sort unique, and then you have a really good list of um of um, li really good links of um, targets you can hack on and points and maybe PHP file, other interesting files that you might find. And start gripping for interesting strings in this list of um, crawled files. So for example, I'm going to search for, for ad admin because I know that uh, I'm good at finding authentic authentication um, bypasses in admin panels. Or maybe um, I'm going to look for um, application that have reg registration endpoints so that I can do some authenticated scan, uh, authenticated testing, and maybe I'm going to hack on APIs. So I'm just going to search for APIs and start hacking on that. So use also dorking. Uh, often people just do Google dorking, but they don't do Bing dorking, the the go dorking, ask .fm dorking, and um, while doing hacking while on big bounty targets and dorking. I have found some many cases where Bing does find endpoints or subdomains or pages that Google haven't found when working on Google. So don't um, leverage these um, powerful tools and don't hesitate to try to dog on every um, search engine that you find. So here. Let's go and start with some real-world examples. So um, I had this company I was hacking on that had a huge scoop. And after going through the previous steps, um, I found the following subdomain, which says like API something dot target dot com. And browsing to it, it says like API build version number, blah, 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 download. And this is the API, uh, APIs that um, the company is using for this uh, for employees there. I've downloaded all the APKs and started looking for some interesting endpoints, some interesting secrets, and I have found um, nothing. So I copied the title of the page. I've pasted it on Google and being and I'm just like trying to search some other pages using the same title, and I have found the same um, page on another subdomain. But now it give, this gave me um, um, this gave me another page using the same the same like um, uh, sending me the same APKs, but now with a little modification, little thing. So we can see on the six. This says 10 January 2022, while the other one back there said 9 of May 2022. And so this said, this was like, oops, this is going um, good because this is something that I haven't found before. Let me download this and see, because obviously um, most of the time, the earlier version of application are the one that contains the most vulnerabilities and maybe if it's a dev version, so maybe it can contain some credentials. And bingo, while opening the application, I have found this bunch of um, leaks in a dot properties file that give me like um, really good access to every aspect of that company I was hacking on. So we had Okta secrets, we had some SMS um, APIs, we had a lot of other um, credentials to services. So um, I also found remote command execution on this um, company subdomains after doing permutation and with them. Um, regulator and I found this some um, subdomain that I didn't have so this is obviously not the real um, not the real subdomain PGI but um, when you find some wide scope when you're hacking on wide scope targets don't hesitate to collaborate and ask other hackers if they have credentials to some panels because so I have found this um, endpoint that is uploaded in my um, crawling results from Katana and stuff and um, I opened the link and I've seen that um, it needs authentication and there, were, there was no register endpoints. So I just GM it like a friend of mine, Rizzo, and I asked it, man, do you have some credentials for this application? 
I know that you're hacking on this um, company and he says yeah and I said okay um, do you want to collaborate and then that's how we started and we got um, these credentials and then we can we could um, find remote command execution because I know that there was there was um, an upload endpoint and um, <clears throat> so this endpoint um, needed a valid XLS file and trick at a bit to include some AS ASP code and when opening the file then there was the code being executed on the target so um, other things is that you can use Axiom to leverage speed of um, scanning because for example if you get 3000 subdomains you're not going to be able to brute force or fuse the host um, in one hour or two but by using Axiom with, for example, 50 or um, 60 um, uh, instances, VPSs, you can fastly get to that in a matter of hours. So I sent, I started brute forcing the subdomains I had with Axiom and Foof, and um, it found some interesting file set dberror.php. So I know that a lot of people might just like skip, okay, it says like error, it might sound like 404 error and stuff, so it's not interesting. But when opening it, I have found that it was leaking the database um, credentials because it had like an error in, this, in the script. Um, going forward, you can also use shoot and dorking because um, you can do like SSL company or organization or with, um, uh, Fidelity National Services, and then you can find some IPs which do, doesn't have, um, which don't have um, um, host name assigned to. So a real world example of that is that I have found this IP from Should I'm Talking, and I'm reading to the IP directly. It just says um, you're being redirected to Octa for authentication, um, but um, don't. Um, don't forget that you, you have always to try to find some files on the targets that would direct you to login or, or octa endpoints because some ACLs might, might not be really well configured. And by doing fusing on that um, subdomain, I have found this, um, this endpoint that says bprws login slash long. And <coughs> by sending a post request to this um, to this endpoint, I have seen unsupported media type, and so I have um, also found out that it uses it, it accepts XML data. So the application expects XML uh, data. Maybe we can find some XCC here. And so, firstly, I have start started testing a bit, and um, it was finally vulnerable to out of bound um, um, XCC. And so, here we had the DDT file on my server which contained this. Um, this um, entity which sends back a file to my web collaborator and after sending the blind xss payload a uh, blind xxc play payload and hosting the ddt on my system then i could see that the the application was sending back the data of the file i requested to my web collaborator endpoint so another really good example of how to approach good um, wide scope targets is doing more Bing docking because everyone is docking on Google, so maybe you might have more more um, chances trying to Bing on other ser search engines. So um, sending um, copyright company tw 2020 to Bing docking it revealed um, a new domain that I didn't have in my dataset, and it was time for me to find some vulnerabilities. And looking at the application, I have started testing ar around and trying to find some interesting things. And here I've seen that uh, the, the, cookie, the session cookie was vulnerable to SQL injection. And so by sending this um, sleep payload, I can see that the application is sleeping 20,000 um, 20, uh, milliseconds. So probably that it's doing time to on the back end in some functions. Um, so the strategy is mostly it's to use tools such as um, monitor new subdomains and try to monitor keep up to date with some subdomains to be able to 
hack on the targets because uh, before other hackers do um, focus on your strengths for example if you see PHP or maybe if you say ASP maybe this can turn you on and start you know, spending more, more time on the target collaborate with other hackers because obviously um, together we hit harder and share subdomains, share credentials, share interesting endpoints maybe you don't have the knowledge as that someone else is have be, so, be consistent, don't give up easily it's not because you are not finding a bug today or tomorrow that we'll never be finding a bug on this um, specific company and the most important of all for me is to stick to a target for at least 2 or 3 months for myself, I think that this is a perfect time to know that um, okay, I, I'm done hacking on this tar target, I want to, to switch but um, hacking on white scope targets requires a lot of time to know exactly how everything is built up from the target side and know some tweaks that might work on these targets. So um, try to stick to a target for a good reasonable amount of time to, to, to hack on. Also, um, while doing this, um, this um, talk, I open AI is out and now you can use you can leverage chat on OpenAI to try to code some tools that you've always dreamed of. So for example, here I ask um, chat.openai to um, read the Golang tool that's going to search for secrets in a list of your uh, all of links. I will send it and then directly it's really easy to, to build tools based on your creativity here. Thank you for your time and thank you for watching this um, talk and listening to me and uh, see you soon. Thank you.